Hello everybody, it's Ms. Barrier. Uh, we're going to talk about PQA today. And PQA means put the question in the answer. So we're going to be looking at how we use the question to restate our answer. And um, simply uh, looking at this screen, how do we do that? We restate our question by using PQA and put our question in our answer. So that's what we're going to explore a little bit today. So let's go ahead and take out, if you don't already have it out, your English language arts notebook. And you'll see mine on the screen. And we, last time we were together, we talked about question words. So on our table of contents, page one, we're gonna go ahead and put PQA. And that stands for put your question in your answer. So if you'll add that to your table of contents, and then we are going to start taking notes on that on page three today. So take a little bit of time and get your English language arts notebook out if you haven't already. Go ahead and turn to your very first page, the table of contents, and go ahead and label uh, today's lesson PQA, put your question in your answer and your page number and then um, go ahead and pause there if you need to. Okay, hopefully you've got your notebook titled. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to page three of my notebook. And remember at the very top of uh, the notebook where the holes are gonna be on our left, you're going to put your title. And so our title is PQA which means put the question in the answer or in your answer. And then you should have this labeled as page three. So go ahead and turn to page three and let's label that at the top. And if you need to pause here, now would be a good time to pause and catch up with that notebook, with making sure your notebook's ready for your notes today. Okay. So have your teacher pause if necessary, or you pause if you're not quite ready to go on. So first, we have to know what the question is asking us to find out. So the very first thing we want to do is try to figure out what it is that they're asking us for. And we had that last lesson on question words, and we know that those question words can definitely help us figure out what the question is asking us. Is it asking us a who, a what, a when, a where, a why, a how? Um, so we definitely want to use those question words. So for example, how long does it take to get to the mall? And you'll notice that how long is one of those question words that we talked about in the last lesson. So there's our question word, how long? And then it wants to know, does it take to get to the mall? Well, I've gone ahead and answered that for you. And um, the reason I colored it in pink and blue is that the how long part is actually my answer, 20 minutes. But I want to PQA, I wanna put my question in my answer. And so I said, it takes 20 minutes to get to the mall. I didn't just say 20 minutes, I verified what it is that I'm saying takes 20 minutes. It takes 20 minutes to get to the mall. So that's what we're going to be uh, doing today. We want to eliminate the question word, the who, what, when, where, why, how, and then write our answer because the who, what, when, where, why, how becomes our answer. All right, so let's flip over to our English language arts notebook and let's take a note right here on that. So the first thing I wanna do when I have a question is to read the entire question. Okay, that's very first. I want to make sure I read the whole entire thing and I know exactly what, you know, we're talking about. The next thing I want to do is to eliminate, which means take away the question word. 
And that question word is going to be that who, what, when, where, how, why word that we talked about in the last lesson. So I'm going to take that out of the question, leave the rest of the question there. And that part that I take out is my, going to become my answer. So I'm left with take the part that remains and reword or shuffle it around to begin your answer. And I'll show you exactly what that means in just a minute. Um, we're actually going to look at how we shuffle those around. Sometimes we can just flat out put the answer right in where the question word was and it makes sense. Sometimes it doesn't. So sometimes we have to kind of take the part that's left, the part that remains, and kind of mix it up a little bit to make a good sentence answer. And then that would leave us with step number four is to include your answer. So we're going to take that question word, the answer to that question word back and put it back in our final uh, answer sentence. Okay. So those are the steps that we're going to follow for PQA. And I want you to write those down in your English language arts notebook. I'll give you um, some time. Your teacher can give you some time or this would be a good time for you to pause if you're doing this independently and make sure you get these notes in your language arts or English language arts notebook. Okay, so we're back. Let's look at another example of taking the question word away and then whatever we have left, turning that into our answer. So my first question here is why did the grass stop growing? Why is my question word? Okay, we recognize that. They wanna know a reason that it stopped growing. So I'm gonna take that why away, I'm gonna take it out for the time being, and I'm only left with the grass stopped growing. So I wanna rearrange that or reorganize that so that that's gonna become now part of my answer. In this case, it was real easy to do. I just put a capital letter on the T. The grass stopped growing, and then I brought my why back in, my answer to my why, because the sprinklers stopped working. Okay, and then I finished my sentence with my period. Another example, where did the Titanic sink? Where is my question word? Take it away and I'm left with the Titanic sink. Turn that into my new answer. I'm going to start with that. The Titanic sank and then my answer to my where in the Atlantic Ocean, period, okay? All right, next, the next thing we have to do, now we know how, kind of how to do it, how to use the question words and do it. Now we need to know why it's important to do that. You know, why is that such a big deal? You know, um, why do I need to do that, Miss Barrier? So we're gonna do an activity and you can either choose to use your language arts notebook for this activity or you can use a scratch piece of paper, or you can just remember kind of in your mind. But I'm going to show you three answers. So these are three answers. There were some questions that were asked that these are the answers to. I want you to think of what that question might have been. So if the answer is number one, they got a new job there. What do you think the question might have been? Either think that in your mind right now or jot that down somewhere on a scratch piece of paper or you can use your English language arts notebook. Think about what question they might have been asking us. They got a new job there. That's my answer. Number two, my answer is she was gardening. What do you think the question might have been? Think that in your mind or jot that down on your scratch paper or your notebook. What was the question? If the answer was she was gardening, what was the question? What do you think it might have been? And then number three, it opened two hours ago. 
If that's the answer, what do you think the question was? It opened two hours ago. What question did they ask that that was the answer for? So take a minute just to jot that down. And if you need to, now would be the time to have your teacher pause or you pause the video and make sure you've got in your mind or jotted down somewhere what you think these three questions might have been. Okay, so let's look at number one. They got a new job there. The question was, why did the family move to California? How many of you got that right? Anybody? Hmm. Probably not many of you got that right. They got a new job there. Why did the family move to California? They got a new job there. Did anything in that answer help me know what the question was? Not really. Answer number two, she was gardening. Let's see what the question was. Why did mom burn the cupcakes? How many of you got that? Why did mom burn the cupcakes? She was gardening. Hmm. That question doesn't really fit with that answer, does it? The last answer we had was it opened two hours ago. The question was, what time does the stadium open for the game? It opened two hours ago. How many of you got that one right? Probably not many of you, if any. So what was wrong? What was wrong with those questions? Were they bad answers or did these questions or these answers have PQA? And the answer is no, they didn't have PQA. I had no idea what the question was based on the answer because they had not used PQA for their answers. So let's try that again, but let's use some excellent answers that have used PQA, okay? So here's our questions this time. And this time I do want you to write in your English language arts notebook. Um, I don't want you to write this answer. I want you to write what you think the question was. So the answer is my baby sister is three months old. In your English language arts notebook, write down what you think this question was. If the answer was my baby sister is three months old, what do you think the question was? And now would be a good time to pause and have some time to think and write down your question for answer number one. Okay, hopefully you've got number one done. Here we go, here's the question. So the answer was my baby sister is three months old. The question was how old is your baby sister? How many people got that one right this time? I should probably be seeing lots of hands if I were in the class with you right now. Did you have enough information that you think that answer was PQA? How old is your baby sister? My baby sister is three months old. Hmm. Okay, let's try number two. If the answer is the gorilla at the zoo weighs 300 pounds, in your English language arts notebook, write down what you think the question was for number two. If the answer is the gorilla at the zoo weighs 300 pounds, what do you think the question was? Write that down now. Please pause and think about your answer and get that jotted down. Okay, number two. The gorilla at the zoo weighs 300 pounds. The question was, how much does the gorilla at the zoo weigh? How many of you got that one right? I should be seeing everybody's hand or maybe more than last time. Maybe now you're kind of catching on to it. These answers have been PQA. How much does the gorilla at the zoo weigh? The gorilla at the zoo weighs 300 pounds. All right, last one for practice. Number three, since it rained for hours, the backyard flooded. What do you think the question was? Pause now and write down what you think the question is for number three. All right, number three, since it rained for hours, the backyard flooded. The question was, why did the backyard flood? 
the backyard flooded since it rained for hours. The backyard flooded because it rained for hours or since it rained, the backyard flooded. Now, did you get most of those correct this time? Was it different? It should have been. Why is it important to restate the question in your answer? If you're in class with your teacher right now, I would pause the video and talk about that last sentence and talk about how important it is to not only the teacher, but also the student to make sure that you have restated the question in your answer. All right, we're gonna be doing some activities. And activity number one, I'm gonna put on the board here in just a second, um, some cards. Some of these are bad answers with no PQA, and some of these are excellent answers that have been PQA. And what I would like for you to do is just, um, in your language, language, arts notebook, just jot down the numbers, just the number, not the whole words, just the number of the questions that you think are bad and which ones you think are excellent. So I'm gonna put the sorting cards up and I'm gonna present so this will be a little bit bigger. Okay, so I want you to read through these, through these cards. The ones that you think have been PQA'd, they're gonna be good answers, okay? You might put yes and no. So write down the numbers that are yeses and the numbers that are no's. Go ahead and pause the video and get down that yes and no answers. Which ones are good PQA answers? Which ones are not good PQA answers? All right, let's look at those. So I'm gonna show you the answers that were the good answers. Here they are. These numbers, number four, number five, number six, number seven, and number eight. These were the PQ8 answers. All the rest were not PQ8 answers. They did not restate the question in their answer. So for activity number two, I'll skip the directions. Using only the excellent answers, I want you to write what you think the question was. Now in your English language arts notebook, I put these back up, I want you to number this four, five, six, seven, eight, and I want you to write down the question that you think they asked using this answer. What was the question for number four? What was the question for number five. Pause the video and complete activity number two. Okay, here we go. Let's look at our answers. Compare your answers to the correct answers. If I could live anywhere in the world, I would choose the North Pole. Your question should have been, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? Or something very similar to that. Number five, my bedroom is on the top floor of our house. Your answer should have been, on which floor of your house is your bedroom? Or something very similar to that. Number six, I have $10 to spend on a new set of Shopkins. You should have had, how much money do you have to spend on Shopkins? Number seven, when I get home from school, the first thing I do is eat a snack. Your question? What is the first thing you do when you get home from school? And number eight, I'm allowed to play on my iPad for 30 minutes every day. Your question should have been, how many minutes can you play on your iPad each day? So now if you, if you haven't checked those already, please pause now and check those. All right, our last activity is going to be an independent activity and your teacher is gonna to have to work this out with you uh, one, of, one of two different ways. Um, we're gonna be doing some awesome answer cards and what these are, these are a little, a short reading passage and then there's a question underneath the very short reading passage. And so you're going to actually answer the question using PQA and you can look to your teacher for whether she wants you to do that in your um, English language arts notebook, or if she wants you to do that to turn in on a piece of notebook paper, or if she's gonna have you digitally do that. So you'll need to look to her for that. 
But um, here's how these task cards work. There are 10 of them in all. There are five slides. So teachers, if you're going to do this in class together, you may want to um, put up the first two, give kids time to work on it, and then when most of them are close to being finished with the first two, go ahead and advance. If your children are on their own individual devices, um, you can give them this PowerPoint or just these slides, the activity four slides of the PowerPoint, and they can work those on their own. So the directions are to read each card and then answer the question by using PQA. So every card has a very short little story and then a question underneath. So you're going to use PQA, put your question in your answer, and you are going to turn this question into an answer in a complete sentence. Okay? If you need help, refer back to our notes that you took um, about PQA in your English language arts notebook. All right. Now would be a good time to um, talk with your teacher and clarify any, any unknowns that you might have about doing the assignment. Like I said, there are um, 10 of these. There's two on each page. Teachers, if you need to just copy these five slides and send them to kids digitally, or you could actually copy the um, slides on a piece of copy paper and give them to the kids. So. All right, hope you um, got that and enjoyed that lesson, PQA. Um, I'll be back next time with another English language arts lesson. So see ya, see you soon.